Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. This is going to be a very short story of everything that PayPal had gone through and we as developers had gone through as we rebuilt our API infrastructure for something that was a very antiquated system over to something that was much more developer efficient. This is everything that we had done. Now, in the beginning, there was SOAP. This is where we started from. It was the days of XML and bloated formats. REST was in its infancy. And this is what we had built on. It worked, and people could leverage off of APIs. But then the enlightenment happened. People realized that, hey, my life doesn't have to suck when I'm working with other people's stuff. And REST became a standard in the industry. REST became something that everyone was starting to work on and starting to build upon. And they realized that shorter formats, smaller formats, could actually improve the developer efficiency. But then every company started jumping on, to, on board with that. They said, yes, of course, we support REST because we support get and post. We support basic HTTP standards. They started uh, just being bandwagon jumpers on top of there and not really understanding everything that they were doing and everything behind it and all the efficiency that they could build upon. And that led to those working with the specifications, realizing that you know, there were specific principles, and they started treating it like a religion, started treating it like, it, like the pragmatic approaches were the only way to really work with things. But as we were going through these same principles that so many companies before us had gone through, we realized something very, very small about this, that the principles were simply just a guide. This was something to guide us towards building a more developer-efficient product, something that, that should have been done in the, in the first place, something that should have been continued upon throughout the entire time that we were building our API infrastructure. And we learned a lot of lessons along the way. We learned a lot of things about building a, an efficient API infrastructure. You know, firstly, we needed to lower the, the latency of every, everyone that's coming in using our services because that directly related back to monetization loss from, from all the companies working with our APIs. We realized that there was something attributable back to 100 millisecond loss on the API infrastructure to millions of dollars lost in the industry. So for us, dropping this, uh, this effect or dropping the latency became a huge aspect for us. Separating out the concerns of our classic APIs, what we had to support, and our new APIs, the RESTful services, what we wanted to support. Then, building upon standard HTTP principles. We were working with old infrastructure supporting error code 10008, which was completely meaningless to developers. Why would we build on something that wasn't a standard? Automation, working with just an effect of Hadeos with hypermedia constraints within the RESTful principles actually allowed us to give developers back a way of, of building an automation, building in a reliable and scalable infrastructure within their developer support as our REST APIs continually changed. And then at the end of the day, the only thing that we were trying to do with, with this rebuilding effort was bring the APIs back to where they should be, offloading the complexity. If, if the question ever came up of, hey, we have this complicated method to, to impose for security or for the API infrastructure, should we offload that to developers or should we do it ourselves? The answer should never be to offload it to developers. I've worked on too many systems like that in the past. And at the end of the day, you're not building a perfect system here. You're building a perfect system for your developers. So that's the story of our rebuilding efforts at PayPal and a few of the things that we went through. Thank you very much, everyone.